Well, praise the Lord. Wanted to come with a testimony uh, video about the Awake Conference that took place in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, 2023. And I wanted to share um, share about uh, what took place there and um, the importance of the conference and uh, the uh, the the fellowship uh, that we had there uh, coming together and um, like Brian had said in his uh, live stream laying things aside coming together and uh, seeking the Lord and uh, ready to hear from the Lord and uh, just ready to uh, put things behind as Brother Adam Bishop preached and reach for those things that are before us. Uh, the Apostle Paul said that in Philippians uh, chapter number three. But I wanted to open up here with some scriptures that God had stirred in me as I'm sitting here reading the word of God. Second uh, Corinthians 13 in verse four. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. And when I was reading this, it just, it's perfect because it reminds me of all the things that took place at this, at this gathering of this brethren. You have Christ crucified here, preached, and talking about you being dead to yourself, that so Christ can live in you, that's the power of God. He talked about in verse 5 here to examine yourself. And every person in there was being examined by the word of God first and foremost. But as they looked around and they saw these great men of God, as, as I would call them, guys like Flip Benham and Jim Weber, uh, Coach Dave, as they looked around, and uh, it'll cause you to examine yourself. It'll cause you to look within. Not to just only see whether you're in the faith, but to also just see where am I at and how can I go from here? And this brought this conference brought all that. It brought edification and not to destruction. It wasn't a conference where people came in and pointed fingers and uh, their whole goal and their whole mission was to tear down individuals or tear down the body. The whole goal of everyone that preached in this conference was to build up, was to edify, was to sharpen, was to challenge, was to provoke to love and good works. And that's what a true meeting of saints looks like. Even when we gather 
uh, for church on Sunday at KJV Baptist Church. That's what it. That's what it is. That's what it's like, and that's how it should be when men of God gather. For such a time as this conference was put forth. And then the parting words of Paul here in this epistle. Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. I want to live in peace. You know, I don't want to be entangled with the affairs of this life. I don't want to be entangled uh, and ensnared with uh, vain talk and uh, things that aren't pertaining to godly edifying. I don't want to be ensnared with it. I don't want to be entangled with it. I don't want anything to do with it. I want to walk in peace with God. And, and the best way to walk in peace with God is is to stay out of those things. Now there's a time to get involved and there's a time to speak and, and, and that's all there. But for the most part, I want to stay out of those things. As Brother Adam Bishop said yesterday, I want to point at the scoreboard. I don't want to run my mouth. I want to let my job, my work speak for itself. That was a great word. But that's being of one mind. And we had a lot of people come together that were a lot of the same mind. Yes, there's differences. Yes, there's differences in approach and things like that. And uh, how this guy might do it opposed to how this guy do it. But the, 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 the point is, uh, Jim Weber had made a uh, statement. He said, dead men don't take offense. I shouldn't be offended at how that guy does it or that guy's ideas. I should listen to them and I should impart what he has to give to me. But we had uh, great speakers speak at this conference and I was greatly encouraged and edified uh, and I have some things written down here about what each person that got up there, minus myself. I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about these brothers. I'm here to lift up these men of God that spoke to me. You spoke to me. And I'm here to uh, give glory to God that you obeyed God and spoke what the Holy Ghost led you to speak on. The first speaker that I'm talking about here is Flip Benham. Uh, and he preached about seeing things clearly, having a vision. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Proverbs 29 and 18. Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So what he's saying here as he's delivering this message is a watchman, because that's what he was talking about. He was talking about watchmen. He was talking about how the church needs prophets to go to the church to warn the church. And he's saying that prophet, that man of God, needs a clear vision on how to go about it, on how to attack it, on where to go and when, and things like that. We know that uh, Jeremiah, the word of the Lord, came to him and told him exactly what to do, and so that's what we must be seeking uh, is vision. And the part of that uh, vision, uh, as he was preaching on, was restoring the foundations. And I preached on this um, several weeks ago now at KJV Baptist Church that the devil has attacked the foundations. The uh, Bible says in Psalm 11.3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The devil has attacked the foundations of the church. 
from holiness to the Bible uh, to uh, actual biblical salvation, all these things, the devil has come and he's attacked all these facets of the foundations of the doctrine of Christ. And, uh, and the churches are destroyed because of it. Uh, and so prophets need vision to know where to go, when to go, to go preach and call these people to repent. Because for the time has come that judgment must first begin at the house of God. And, and if it first begin of us, what shall the, uh, what will be the end of them that obey not the gospel? And if the, uh, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and ungodly appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God commit to the keeping of his soul in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So he was preaching on these things. And then in John 17, 4 was the main verse that he harped on. And again, this is the, he spoke two times, but this is what stuck to me most. Uh, that we have a work to do. Every single one of us has a work to do. God has called us to do a specific task to do. And Jesus had said in John 17, in verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. God has given us a work to do. God has given us a job to do. And we must finish that work. We must endure to finish that work. We must go through all these things to finish that work, that final work that he has called us to. Whatever it may be. Do you even know what work God has called you to? Yes, he's called you to preach, but there's more than that that God has called you to. And so... Finish the work is what he was saying. And he was using uh, Isaiah as the example uh, in Isaiah 6 there when he saw the Lord and saw that he was unclean. He was undone. He was unclean. All right. And then they brought the coal and they purified. He got purified. And then he was set forth as a flame, right, through the rest of the, uh, the book there. But that's the whole key and what he was preaching was this work that God gives us. And we can't get it without the vision. We can't get it without that vision. We perish without vision. Which means we perish without uh, hearing from God and seeing. So we perish without those things. So Flip, Flip Benham, uh, he really spoke to me personally uh, in that in these things, and I, I receive every bit of it. I receive every bit of it because now I come back to Florida where I'm at and I I have a vision. I know what I need to do. And so uh, it's really uh, encouraging when when you know exactly what God wants you to do now. What's the next step? It fires me up because I know... That when God speaks to me and he has given me work to do, that I'm fired up to do it and I'm going to jump all in. So that should be your heart. That should be my heart. But we've got to be willing to hear. And that's what I came there to, the, uh, to this conference to do was to hear from men of God, filled with the spirit of God. I didn't come to speak, and although I did speak, but that's not why I was there. I came to be edified. I came to be pierced. I came to be challenged. I came to be provoked. Because I want to grow. And saints of God, you should want to grow. You should want to be sharpened. You should want to uh, uh, carry uh, a better tool bag. You don't want a butter knife. You want a sharp sword. Brother Nolan Cramford preached on time. And, uh, you know, the, the thing about Christ is the simplicity of Christ. 
how the simplicity of a message speaks louder than a complicated message. <laughs> a simple message. Adam Bishop had a simple message as well. But time was his focus. That's what God gave him. Now be sure that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We have been given this gift of salvation. We have been bought with a price. We have been regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not to sit on the couch, not to uh, fade off into the sunset, but to redeem the time. And redeeming the time is going and preaching Jesus Christ. That's redeeming the time. Redeeming the time is doing what uh, Brother Jim Weber had talked about is multiplicate, multiplication, getting these signs and posting them everywhere. Redeeming the time is you going to those, those family members you still haven't witnessed to and you dealing with their soul. Redeeming the time is you dealing with people that you haven't dealt with at work yet or sharing the gospel with them. Redeeming the time is you dying to you and Jesus living through you. That's redeeming the time. Or Jesus is increasing and you are decreasing. That's redeeming the time. He talked about how, uh, Brother Nolan talked about how your life's a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then it vanishes away. We've only got a short time here. It's, it's here today. It's gone tomorrow. You and I are in the present. We don't even know if we have tomorrow. This might be my last message right here. I don't know. We don't have tomorrow. And that's how we ought to act dead, like dead men. We ought to act like it. And so how much more time should we be spending with God? How much more time should we have our hand on the plow and preaching? How much more time should we be sowing the gospel seed? How much more time should we be spending doing these things? Your life is a vapor. And he was using the analogy of these sinners smoking their cigarettes and that smoke puff going up and it vanishing away. And I use that all the time when I preach, but that's one of my favorite analogies to use because that's how fast it goes. That's how fast we can be gone. We're here today, we're gone tomorrow. So with every bit of time you we have, we need to be disciplined. We need to be diligent. We need to be in our word more. We need to be spending more time with God. We need to be in prayer. And we need to, above all, be putting feet to those prayers. He ended with 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4, that no man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, but to please him, to please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And that kind of goes back to uh, 2 Corinthians here. 2 Corinthians 13. In verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. We're to follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. How much more the household of faith should we want to live at peace with all men? But that's the very nature of that. We don't entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. Man, if you want to entangle yourself with the affairs of this life, you're going to kick the round. You're going to lose focus. You're going to lose focus and your focus is not going to be on what work you have to complete. So I enjoyed Brother Nolan's message because of the simplicity of it. Brother, straight, short, and to the point, those people speak to me. So praise God. The next speaker was Coach Dave. Uh... Dobbenmeyer, I believe is how you say it. And uh, some of the things I have written down here 
which I knew he was going to talk about because his ministry is called Pass of Salt Ministry. So, of course, he's going to talk about Matthew 5, 13, that ye are the salt of the earth, and the salt that lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned, henceforth good for nothing but to be trodden down and cast into the foot of men. You don't want to lose yourself. You don't want to lose who you are in Christ. That's number one. You don't want to lose who you are in Christ, but you don't want to lose yourself, period. You don't want to lose your first love. You don't want to lose focus. You don't want to fall into sin. That's how salt can lose its savor. It falls into sin. It becomes entangled. It becomes a besetting sin. That's how you lose your savor. You lose your savor because you start yoking up into worldly things. Things are not expedient. And he was telling us to be on guard against that. That the battle is local. That it starts where you're at. It starts right where you're at. The local fight. For us at KJV Baptist Church, it's all it's been about the local fight. It's been about going to the people in our Jerusalem. And it needs to be the same for you. The battle is local. Now he brought in a lot of good ideas. Going to city council members, you know, speaking to city council members, mem members going to uh, officials. He brought a lot of uh, uh, different ideas on how we can attack this battle. But we're not to be on the defensive. We're to be on the offensive, is what he said. And... That's not a lot of Christians today. They don't want to be on the offensive because if they're going to go on the offensive, that means a lot of things are going to happen. And one of them is the one thing they don't seem to want to deal with, which is persecution and being hated. Becoming known in your local area. Oh, there's those people. Becoming known, losing your precious name, and being slandered, uh, and being hated. But Jesus called you to be hated. And you're not going to have peace and in, in live in peace if you're not in Christ. You're not going to be able to do these exploits if you're not in Christ and abiding in Him. You can't do these exploits. You can't go on the offensive when you have sin in your life. You can't go on the offensive without boldness. Can't do it. You can't go on the offensive. What you'll do is you'll go on the defensive. What you'll do is you'll become passive. What you'll do is become compromised. What you'll do is become the couch potato. What you'll do is you'll find other things and say, oh, I think I'm called to this. You're not called to that. You're called to preach. You're called to go forth. You're called to be a witness. You're called to be the light. You're called to be salt. You're called to go forth and declare the good news of Jesus Christ. You're called to go forth and stand against sin. You're called to go forth and be that light. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. You're not called to this ministry or that ministry. You're called to the ministry of reconciliation. You're called to go forth and preach, to lift up, to declare, to herald, to be a witness. To stand in the wicked's face, to judge the wicked, to preach, to call them to repent. Stop coming up with humanistic ideas. Stop coming up with every other way, but accept the Bible's way. The Bible has the way. Stay that way. You do it because you're compromised. You do it because you don't want to be hated. You do it because the cares of this life are choking out the word in you. That's why you do it. That's why you do it. 
Hey, listen, you're not going to have an excuse in front of the King of Kings as to why you stopped and why you decided to do something that's not according to his word. You're not going to have an excuse then. Make all the excuses you want today. But when you stand before Jesus himself, you won't have an excuse. You won't be able to point the finger. You're going to have to point the finger right back to your heart that's not right with him. All this talk about not every Christian's called the preach. That's a lie from hell. You're a man. You are called to preach. As this brother Grant said, I'm predestined to preach. A lot of Calvinists are predestined, but they're not predestined to preach. How amazing is that? The battle's local. Where to be on the offensive, not the defensive. So get on the offensive. And if that takes you to put your face to the ground and cry out to God and get your heart regenerated and get your heart right with God, then that's what you need to do. But God needs you and he doesn't need you five years from now. He needs you right now. Brother Jim Weber had a lot. And Brother Brian said, we wore out the memory cards. Brother Jim Weber, you give, it's like Paul. It's what it reminded me of. Uh, Acts chapter number 20 and verse 7 when it says Paul began to preach until midnight. And then it talks about the man falling out from uh, the top floor. Forget his name. Um, Jim Weber is just a ball of knowledge and wisdom. A ball of knowledge and wisdom. A lot to glean off of there. And I have a couple things written down. That stuck out the most to me. He said, the very first things he said, it's a privilege. It's an honor and a privilege to represent God. An honor and a privilege to represent the one who created it all. To represent Jesus Christ. To represent God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is an honor and a privilege. And then his question was, how do I represent him? How do I represent him? Well, you can start with this. This is the first thing that came to my mind. 1 Corinthians 1.21. Uh, because in the wisdom of... Uh, the Bible says, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe. I want to do what pleases God. I want to do what pleases God. I don't want to make up humanistic ways in my mind of how I think I can please God. I want to do things that pleases God. I want to see what pleases God in the scripture and do it the way that it pleases Him. Not my flesh. It doesn't please my flesh to go preach all the time. It doesn't please my flesh. My flesh is always fighting against me and I've got to crucify it and kill it and keep it dead so Christ can work through me, can preach through me what he wants done. Because of the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe. I want to do what pleases God. I want to do what God calls wise. And wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She opened her, she opened her mouth in the gates in the city. In the chief place of concourse, she uttereth her word. I want to do what pleases God. I want to do what God says is wise. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Proverbs 8 and verse 1 and 2. I want to do what God says is wise. I want to do what Jesus told the disciples to do. That's the model. 
It's not some other model. That's the model. But people don't want to do it because it's going to cost them something. They may be labeled as a lunatic. They may be labeled as all he does is yell at people. They may be labeled a lot of things, but they don't have thick skin. They have thin skin like a wimp. Stop being a wimp. Pull up your pants. Be a man and be strong. Hallelujah. It's an honor and a privilege to represent the king of kings. Do you serve him with everything you got? How do you, I represent a man? When he said that, man, all these scriptures just kept psh, like a data, like a data dump. Just psh. how do I represent him? He told me how to represent him. Now I just got to go. God wants faithful men, as uh, Jim said. He'll give you faithful to be least in to start. I've experienced that. Brother Alan Puckett, right now you're experiencing that. He's giving you a little. Be faithful with the little, brother. Be faithful with the little. Why? So when it's time to move in to another role, when it's time to move into another work, when it's time to move into another area, you're ready to take on more. Thick skin, not thin skin. We don't need to be a thin skinned little wimp. We don't need to cry baby all the day long. But this guy said that and this guy said that. Shut up. How important is the Bible to you? Well, to me, that was a question he gave. It's everything to me. It's everything to me. This is my lifeline. The Holy Ghost, the Word of God that governs my life. It governs my life. I esteem it more, more than necessary food got to have it. I've got to eat from it. I've got to get filled so I can go out and do what God needs done. So I'm ready to give an answer to every man that asketh me the reason, the hope that is in me with meekness and fear. So that I'm ready to be instant in season and out of season. So that I'm ready to give my testimony to somebody. It's my life line. It's everything to me. He had a lot of good stuff and I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. He had a lot of knowledge to give. He's 75 years old. He's been preaching for 50 years. There's a lot to take in. There's a lot to uh have imparted. So I'm thankful for that brother. I'm thankful for his book that he, he gave out at the conference. I'm looking forward to reading it. I've read a couple other books since I've been saved. My main focus is normally the Bible. It usually takes me quite a while to accomplish reading books like this, but I will read it and I'm looking forward to reading it. The next speaker was Brother Brian. And he had preached uh, this before in one of his YouTube videos, I think years ago. But it was from Matthew chapter number one. And he talked about, are you a just man? And he talked about Joseph, how he was a just man. And he didn't put, uh, he put, he looked to put uh, Mary away privately, not publicly. Uh, but the main thing that he really harped on in his message was take time to think on important decisions. Hey man, I need to hear that. Because sometimes, I'm not just talking about in the important things. I need to take time sometimes to think on things, on the little things. I need to do a better job just doing that. I need to do a better job sometimes of just being hasty to respond. I need to do better at that. So it wasn't just take time to think 
on the important decisions. And sometimes it's just take time to think, period. Period. I needed to hear that. Because it's so easy, and it's just easy to just jump in. It's just easy to jump in and do this or that and not really think too much about it. And I understand when you're out there preaching and we're out there uh, in spiritual war and we're on the battlefield and things like that, we have to make quick decisions. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about uh, with these little things. Sometimes I'm just hasty to give an answer and I have to stop that. I have to slow down. I have to slow down. And so do you. I want to be wise. I want to, I want to be a wise man. I don't want to be a king. And there's a lot of people, and that's another message that he preached on in the past that's one of my favorites of all. You want to be a king or a wise man. There's a lot of people out there, they want to be a king. They want to be like Adonijah, and they want to come in, and they want to steal the reign from Solomon, and God didn't appoint them in that place. And what happened to Adonijah? God killed him. Solomon had him put to death. So be careful wanting to be a king. It's a good way to get killed. I want to be a wise man. I want to be wise. And friend, the only way we're going to be wise is if we cleave to this word and we are guided by the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost leads us to do. We've got to be wise. We've got to think. The righteous study at the answer, but out of the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Nothing but evil things. Nothing but destruction continually coming out of the mouth of the wicked rather than edification. Adam Bishop preached on focus. And another message that I love personally, because I like the simple, straight to the point th messages. Those resonate with me the most. Philippians chapter number three is what he preached out of. That was his main focal point. I, he started earlier, uh, I think he started actually right at 11 or 12 and read to 14, but I'm going to start at uh, 7. But what things were gained to me, though those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him. Oh, that's care. careful with that one. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of uh, in Jesus Christ. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if anything ye be otherwise minded 
God shall reveal this unto you. Be perfect and be of the same mind. Press toward the mark. I want to hit the mark every time. I want to be on target every time. And I want to forget those things that are behind. The mistakes that I've made in the past, I want to forget them. I've learned from them, and now I want to forget them. 2023, a lot of stupid things happened in 2023, and I remember them, but I want to forget them. I want to press toward the mark of the high calling. I want to keep my focus on Jesus Christ. I want to keep my eyes on Christ. And Nolan brought this up too when Peter was walking uh, on the water with Christ and he took his eyes off of Jesus when the, the tempest came and he started to sink. I want to keep my eyes on Christ. I want to keep my focus on Jesus and let all, all the, the tempest and all the trash that wants to come and blow up in here I'm not even going to be affected of it because I'm, my eyes are on Christ. My faith, my hope is in Christ. I'm trusting in Jesus. My heart is fixed. That's how, I, that's how I'm perfect. Because my heart is fixed. And I'm pressing towards that mark. That finishing line, amen? That finishing line. It's, we're going to get there one day. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. How are you going to finish? You're going to be finished looking back? How are you going to cross the line when you're looking back? You can't cross the line looking back. You won't even hit that tape. You're going to go run off into a ditch. You got to have your eyes forward. You got to be fixed. Follow after it. I love that in verse 8. Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. Crap! He counts it as dung. He lost all. Therefore, he's gained all. You got to lose all to gain all. Amen. I have a couple sidebars here. And I, I love all these brothers that got up there and spoke. It really edified me. It really encouraged me. I don't know if you can tell in this video or not. Uh, it might be hard, a little hard to tell. I don't know. Uh, but I'm encouraged. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to go forth. I got to preach tonight at a Sticks concert in Clearwater, but I'm ready to go. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to cry aloud. I'm ready to call sinners to repent, and I'm ready to see them reconciled to Jesus Christ. But I have some sidebars here. And Grant got up there, and, and I'd already mentioned this, and he, he uh, something that stuck out to them is he had perfect peace in the will of God. Perfect peace in the will of God. And that goes back to 2 Corinthians 13. In verse 11, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. The only way you're going to live in peace, as he said, in perfect peace, is to be in the will of God. To be in the will of God. I'm thinking about Philippians right now. Philippians 4. Be careful, verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are of good rapport, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Think on these things. These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Perfect peace in the will of God is what the brother said. And then, of course, my favorite line, he's predestined to preach. And if you're born again, you're predestined to preach. If you're a man, are you a man of God? Don't be a wimp. Don't be a wuss. Don't be a sissy. Gird up them loins. Gird them up. Be a man. Here, Greg Hill gave a testimony about the first time he saw Brother Brian and Nolan preaching at a festival and how God struck him. How God struck him. And he realized he needs to be doing that. He needed to be preaching. Man says his life was changed because of that day. What an encouragement that was to hear that. The fruit of street preaching. The fruit of just doing what God says to do. The simplicity of what God just tells you to do. You just, you obey it. Obedient faith. And then on one final note, one of the things that inspired me right off the bat, and I even mentioned it when I was preaching, is when Alan Puckett went up there because we had an introductory uh, in the beginning, the first night we had a meet and greet, everybody got up there and, and said who they were and, you know, where they're from and, and stuff like that. But I remember Alan went up there and it, this resonated with me more than in anybody else. He went up there and it was real short and he just introduced himself and he said, you know, I've fallen, I fell down, but I'm back up. I got back up and I'm trusting in Jesus. And then that, uh, Jim Weber had said, if you sin, he gave a word. He said, if you sin, then just rebound, rebound and get back in. Confess your sin, confess it, forsake it and get back in, get back in the fight. God needs you. He doesn't need you on the sidelines somewhere in the dumps. He doesn't need you in the alleyway, down in the dirt, dying. He needs you to get right with him because he wants to use you. But this man, in front of everybody, I've fallen. I've done, I've made mistakes. I've done wrong. But I'm back on my feet and I'm trusting in Jesus. And man, if that don't, inspire you to want uh, to see people reconciled, if that don't inspire you to want to see people get up and get on fire for Jesus, then I don't know what does. This conference had everything, amen. The fellowship was sweet. We got to sing some old KJV Baptist uh, church hymns. We got to go street preach a little bit and get on the battlefield with one another and get in the trenches and get that bond a little closer. And uh, we were all edified. And that's the most important thing. We got edified. No one came to destroy. No one came to destroy. Paul said, I came to edify. Let's look at it one more time. Second Corinthians. We're talking amongst the brethren. Not talking amongst sinners here. 13 and verse 10, Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not, not, not destruction. And that's what we got. We got edified. We examined ourselves. We put our face to the ground and said, Lord, if there's any unclean thing in me, Reveal it to me because I want to be right with you. We got edified. Verse 8, for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. 
That's what we're here to do. We're here to serve for God's truth. God's truth. Because that's not ever going to pass away. We got edified to be perfect. Of good comfort to be of one mind to live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Is that what you want? But that's what we got. That's what we got. People got filled up. People got encouraged. Brother said, lives were changed. You know, another thing that I, I wanted to bring up that just came back to me was everything was done decent in order. But you know what? The greatest thing about it was everything was done decent in order, just like the scripture says. But this brother, Brother Brian, he said, I, you know, uh, one of the brothers, uh, Brother Nick, came up to him and said, hey, who's, who's, who's speaking next? And he says, I don't know. I don't know who's speaking next. So that just shows me. You don't need a packet. You don't need this long, extensive a regiment of how things are going to go. Brother Brian was just being led by the Spirit on who was going to go next. He was trusting in his God. Yes, there was a time to eat. And that's what I'm saying. Things were done decently in order in that way. But as far as the speakers go, uh, guys, we got to be ready to speak whenever called upon. If we claim to have this salvation, the least we can do is go give a testimony of how we got saved. Something. But it was led by the Spirit of God. And see, when God's in it, when God's in it, you don't have to work too hard. You don't have to work too hard to, uh, to make it fruitful, to make it something. Because God's in it. Because God's working with us, saints. God's working with us. And God was working at this conference. And God's going to continue to work uh, within these brothers' lives and with what God has for us in the future here. And I'm excited about it. And, uh, you know, I, I highly encourage you to reach out to Brian Cranford and, uh, and see about anything else that may be coming up. Uh, I know he mentioned that in his live stream. Uh, he talked about, uh, you know, he, he would wants people to reach out to him if they're interested, uh, you know, and, uh, and so... I know there's some brothers that watch this channel, the brothers in Sacramento. You know, I don't know what your uh, your financial situation looks like. I don't know. But I just encourage you to, to reach out and to walk by faith. Uh, Brother Sean Phillips from uh, from Texas there, I've been in contact with you. And, I, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, you've contacted me and I need to contact you back. But I'm just letting you know that uh, to get in touch with Brother Brian and, and see what's coming up because... Uh, the Lord's moving, and uh, he's putting something together here, and uh, it's going to be powerful because Jesus Christ is the center of it all. So I just want to encourage you with all that. I hope it this edified you. I hope you're encouraged, and I hope to, uh, to see you uh, in the future and uh, you know, get out there and serve Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength.